Now, everybody thinks when you talk of a treasure, that it's something that it's a chest full of coins and, you know, gold and silver. But today we're going to talk about your treasures. I don't know if you know, but right now, as you said here, you have a treasure. You have a treasure that you haven't opened yet. You have a treasure that's hid. Nobody knows you have it because you're hiding it. Nobody knows that you're struggling with, should I be bringing this treasure art? Your gifts need to be revealed. Your treasure needs to be revealed. Somebody will be blessed by the treasure you have. And if you're sitting there antsy thinking, oh good, she's going to tell me what my treasure is. Well, just listen and then you might just have to tell me what your treasure is. But if you don't believe, if you're a Christian, but you don't believe that God forgave you, if you don't believe you have the victory, if you can't believe that you can put Satan under your feet, the enemy does believe it. If you can't believe it, then you need to get in touch with Jesus. Just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about it. And I will tell you, it will touch you. You will start seeing things different. The enemy believes there is a God. Why do you think he fights so hard at discouraging us, putting thoughts in our mind, making us ask questions and, you know, questioning this and questioning that and saying, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. And, and you know, um, probably one of the biggest things that, that we think of right now is, why is this pastor going through cancer? Because God's got it. God's using it for his glory. And what do we ask God to do? We ask God to use our lives for his glory, do we not? If you don't mean it, don't ask them. Exactly right. If you want something, if my kids come and ask me something when they were younger and they really wanted it, they didn't just ask once. They came back again. And you know what? I knew. I knew the sincerity of their heart. None of them ever came and said, hey, Mom, can I clean my room? <laughs> I knew that they didn't want it. Don't you think God knows? Don't you think... You know, God, I'd really like to sing a song tonight. Really? God knows our hearts. He knows our desires before we ever even ask him. He knows what we're going through. But we keep asking because the Bible says ask. I want to do what the Bible says. You know, I have a lot of people that, you know, they come and they, they, they give you advice. You all have it through life. Some of it's good advice. And I'm not too proud to say, hey, that was really good advice. But I also am not too, too uh, backward about saying, mm, I don't know about that, you know, because I want to do the will of the Father. That's my desire. That should be your desire. I want to use that treasure that's deep down in that God has for me to you. It's time that we pull out our treasure. And, and, and like when I was younger and if I told somebody, you know what, I'd really like to be a preacher. I could only imagine what some of my group leaders at youth camp thought. Oh, my goodness. She wants to be a preacher. This is the same girl that just threw a smoke bomb in the dorm last night. You know, but I, I, and I did think about, I just told people I wanted to marry a preacher. But you know what? Until God reached down in my treasure box with me and helped me to pull it out, that's when I knew. I need to preach the word of God. Maybe nobody around me ever thought I'd preach, but I wanted to be able to share the word of God because I knew that's what God had me to do. And that's where my treasure was. But maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, I can't do that. I can't lead song service. I surely can't teach a Bible study. Not me. I don't have the capability. But you know what? God doesn't always give it to you before, but he will equip it for you when it's time. He will equip you with what you need to do what you need to do. I'm not afraid to ask God. If God doesn't want me to do something, okay, God. But if God wants me to do something, okay, God. You know, you better do it. You better reach down in that treasure chest because you might be holding the treasure that's going to lead somebody to Christ. Did you know that? And deep down in your heart, there's people who love to sing. And there's people who, the old saying is, they couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. But you know what? God is able. God is able to give you the words. 
He's able to give you the tune and you could sing the most beautiful song in the world. And why? Because you're doing what the Father wants you to do. I want you to think about what is one of the hardest things for you to do. I sometimes, I, confession's good for this all. I, I struggle fasting because I like to eat. And that's probably one of my hardest things. But if that's the treasure that I need to pull out for some reason, I want God to give me the strength to do it. He will equip me to do it. And I believe that we all have different things in our lives. Um, pull the treasure out. Work with others. Talk about it to others and say, you know, Sister Bonnie, I would really like to teach a Bible study. I've never taught one before. And I don't know if I can, but if that's what God wants you to do, you will be able to. You might not know about the subject. You might not know what you even need to preach or you need to teach. But God will equip you with the information. He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you what to do. But let me just tell you this. Don't pull your treasure out and think you can do whatever you want to anytime you want to do it because that's not how God works. God has timing. God has timing. And if you do it for the wrong reasons, oh man, I cannot wait to teach this lesson because I'm going to tell them people because you know what? Some of these people need to hear it. Did you ever say, did you ever hear somebody say, well, it's too bad so-and-so wasn't in church today because they needed to hear that. And maybe you've even said it yourself. And then we used to say, those who needed to hear it were here. No, they weren't always here. They chose not to be here. God didn't drag them to church and he didn't drag you to church. I thank God for the desire he puts in our hearts to be in church. Um, they used to say that Kids had a drug problem because they were drugged to church. But you know what? Thank God for those kids that were drugged to church when they were younger because they might be some of the best preachers, teachers, singers, congregation that anybody has ever seen. But we want to do the will of God. I'm going to read a story to you, and we're going to talk about the disciples today. Um, you know what a disciple is? A disciple is a follower of Jesus. And... I don't know about you, but did you ever, when you were younger, or maybe even now, you're following somebody, and all of a sudden, you can't find them? Do you get scared? I'm going to tell you a little story, and this is another confession thing. One day, we were at a retreat, I believe, and I was driving a van of women, and Bobby had a van of men. Well, we were following Bobby. And I'm thinking, you need to slow down. I'm following this van, and I'm trying to keep up. And Bobby calls me. He says, where are you? I said, I am right behind you. I can see the van. He said, Bonnie, we are sitting at sheets. I was following the wrong van. We, we ended up having to take a whole different, of course, us women, we didn't get shook up about it. We just laughed and got some snacks and got gas and went on. But you know what? Isn't it scary, though? Because like, I'm thinking, boy, he's going fast, and I'm gassing it, you know? And he says, we're setting it sheets waiting on you. And, you know, that was funny. But if you are following God today and tomorrow you decide to follow the world, that's dangerous. That's dangerous ground you're walking on. And sometimes we, we have to step back. And I know myself, I have to, I have to take that step back and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with me. I should not have done this, or I should not have been in this place. Or I think to myself, I should have listened to that still small voice. And it was, don't go around there. I thank God for protecting us. But we're going to get to the disciples. We're going to go to Luke 9. I'm going to start with the first verse, and I'm going to end with one of the other verses. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide and thence depart. How many of us are planners? How many of us think, well, if I go somewhere, I have to take at least two or three pairs of shoes for each outfit, or I have to take, you know, when I go hunting, 
the most important thing to me besides my gun is, and shells, is I need a bologna sandwich to cook over the fire so I can eat. And those are the important things to me, and I want to stay warm. And, oh, yeah, the other important thing is my grandson. But you know what? I plan. I plan it, don't I? Jesus is telling them, don't take none of that stuff. Don't even take an extra coat. And whatsoever house she enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. How many of us, when God speaks to us and he tells us to do something, do we try to rationalize with him? Do we try to say, okay, I'll make a deal with you, God. If you do this, I'll do that. You know what? Probably when I was younger, I believe I did that one time. You don't have to deal with God. Not like that. You don't have to put the cards out on the table, so to speak, and say, you know, Lord, I'll tell you, I'll make you a deal. If you do this for me and I can get this thing or I can go this place, I'll pay my tithes this week. Wrong. You better be paying your tithes every week that you have to pay your tithes. But that's just a deal. People think they have to, as the old word was when my dad was alive, we used, you used to dicker with people, you know. You used to try to say, okay, if you do this, I'll do this. If you go speak to that person, I'll speak to two people over here because that person I don't want to have to speak to. Now, if you have that kind of an attitude and that kind of a heart, you better be speaking to God before you go to speak to anybody. That's just the way it is. If you cannot go to somebody who has used you, abused you, or done wrong with the love of the Lord in your heart, you better have a little talk with Jesus and ask that the Lord to give you that more love for that person. I want to be the person God wants me to be. I want to be humble. I want to care about people. I want to be able to talk the, to the um, not approachable people. And I want to be able to do it in the name of Jesus. If your treasure is to talk to somebody, use that treasure for the Lord. Think about your treasures today. Think about what you really deep down in your heart would want to do and you don't do it because you just aren't sure you can. God is able to do oh, so much more than what we ask him to do. So as we go on, the disciples, they, they went and they did what the Lord had asked them to. And they come back to the Lord. And um, as we all know, when you go out and you witness to people and you give your all or you preach a sermon and you give your all, when you're done, you're a little bit tired. Well, when he come back, they come back. Of course, you know that the multitude is, is following Jesus. Why wouldn't they follow Jesus? They've seen him heal people. They've seen him open the eyes of the blind. They've seen him, you know, um, heal the lame. They've seen him do things that nobody else could do. So that's where the multitude's going to be. And when the disciples came, it was getting late. It's like, and I, I'm going to improvise. Gee, Jesus. This is a pretty big crowd you have here. Do you think maybe you should ask them, maybe maybe they need to start going home. It's getting dark. It's getting dark, and they're probably hungry, and we don't have any food. Jesus said, mm -mm. no, they're okay. They can stay here. Really, Jesus? Well, then do you want us to leave? Do you want us to go? And how many of you have been like that ever? Don't answer it. Just think it. Think about it. How many times have you got to a point that you're just tired, you're weak, and you think, if I have to talk to one more person today, if I have to look at one more person and smile today, but Jesus said, mm -mm, we want them to stay. Um, what do you got there to eat? Well, <laughs> well, Lord, we've got a couple of fish and we've got five loaves of bread, or was it five loaves of bread? Yeah, two fish and five loaves of bread. He says, okay, we'll feed them. But Lord, do you realize we're talking 5,000 men here and they're men. They would eat that whole thing, one person. But Jesus wasn't worried. He just said, we're going to feed them. So as he instructed them, let me go on here. He says, 
For they were about 5,000 men, and he said to his disciples, Make them all sit down in the 50s. Now, I can, I'm picturing this um, in a company. So I'm picturing one, two, three, four, through the number 5,000. But you know what? I can also picture the Lord just happening, and it just did it. They got in their groups of 50 real easy. It didn't take them two hours to count it out. And he says, make them sit down. Excuse me, you need to sit down. Could you imagine? Sometimes in church, when we're asked to stand, we have to be asked maybe two, three times or, or whatever. And that's okay. But he had to say it one time. Just tell them to sit down. So the people sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. There you go, right there. He blessed them. That is what he will do with your treasure. He will bless you. He will equip you to do what he has for you to do. I, I um, always think of the, we have a lady who was a very precious soul, and um, she baked pies. And she told Bobby one time, she said, I, I prayed that God would bless my, my crust. And she made the most beautiful pies, Sister Evie. And she made the most beautiful pies because she wanted to bake pies, not for herself, not for the neighbor, not that she didn't give them to them, but she wanted to do it for God. She wanted to do it because she knew that if she did what God asked her to do, they could use it to raise funds. They could do it so she could give to others. What are we doing in our life? What are we thinking in our life? And what are we asking God to help us do in our life? so we can do it for others, not because we want the glory. Oh, no, 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 no. There is no reason for anybody to try to get the, the highlights of everybody else and, you know, be in the, what do they call that, the flashy lights and everything, sirens going off because you are one of the best pie bakers I've ever had. Or I once had a woman tell me she did what she did because she lived off of the accolades that she got for doing it. Lord knows I don't want that. I don't want that. I want God to receive the glory. Why do you want to use your treasure? Are you using your treasures for what God wants? Are you doing it because you want people to say, wow, you were the best Bible study teacher I've ever had, or wow, you can really preach a sermon, or wow, you, you are the one that should lead song service. That's not the reason to do things, is it? No, that's prideful. We want to do all that we do for God. So when you do it for God, you do it to your best ability. What did I tell you a little bit ago? He will equip you. So anyway, as we go on, and they did eat and were all filled, and there was taken up fragments that remained to them, 12 baskets. Isn't that amazing? There were 12 baskets left. How many disciples were there? There were 12 disciples. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Did you ever go to get something out of your refrigerator maybe because somebody's coming and, and you're feeding them and you think, oh, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. Well, number one, you can come to my house because you all have been cooking this wonderful food and I've got leftovers. And um, I told my daughter, I said, we're, we're going to have some extra soup. Oh, we'll just keep it for next week and we won't even cook, she says. But... um. You know what? God provided for each one of those people. Did they leave hungry? No. And do you think they looked at those baskets and say, oh, I know there's a lot of people here. I'm only going to just take a little piece, okay? They didn't do that. They were, they were fishermen. They were men that were hungry, and God fed them till they were full and overflowing, and that's why we had 12 baskets to share. Um, we have a responsibility, each one of us. If I were to call out your, your profession as a teacher, as an accountant, as a retired fisherman, as a, as a mother, as a father, we all have responsibility for Christ. And when we are where we are in our life, when we are in our situation, when we are at our jobs, when we are in Walmart shopping, 
people are watching you. They are seeing that you are living your life the way you're trying to teach it at church. They are seeing and hearing what you're saying. You know, when, when I die and I walk into heaven, I don't want Christ to look at me and say, wow, get the check off this. Man, you had a lot of Instagram cup people who followed you. Wow. When you put that one thing on Facebook, man, 350 people okayed you. Wow, you made a lot of money. That's not what Christ is going to say. I want to hear Christ say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I want Christ to see that when the Lord said, feed those 5,000, that I got my bread and my fish out and I started doing the baskets. I want the Lord to see that. Not because I want the glory for it. I want God to receive the glory. I want people to look and say, I know you. And I know without God, you wouldn't be able to do that. I know without God, you would never be able to get through what you've been through. Because that's exactly right. I know without God, I couldn't get through the next day if he wasn't with me. I've, I've listened to Bobby pray at times because of the pain. Sometimes the pain gets very severe, and I've heard him pray. And he told me one day, he said, I beg God. He said, I know I don't have to beg God, but God took care of it. And you know what? We don't have to beg God. We have to be sincere. We have to be the person that God wants us to be. We have to ask. And you know, there are days that it's like, I don't understand God. I don't understand why I'm going through this. Did you ever say, I just don't get it. I don't know why. I, you know, I do everything right. I go to church. I'm on my way home from church and I run out of gas. God, why would that happen? Because, Sister Bonnie, I told you you needed to stop and get gas in the back of your mind and you didn't listen to me. So sometimes, exactly. Don't you think sometimes we receive because we didn't do what God was telling us we, you know, we should have done. And I know, I've prayed to get to a gas station. And if I didn't, I couldn't have blamed God. I knew I needed gas. And that's like anything else. You know what? If I'm sick and I go outside in the rain and the snow and my bare feet and I get sicker, whose fault's that? That's not God's fault. That's not even Satan's fault. That's your own fault. You just did what you know not to do. And I use that as an example because I've been known to do that. But that's another scripture, and or that'll be another scripture someday I'll have to look up. Use wisdom. But I want to go over to Mark. In Mark 6 and 7, I want to read that. I better put my glasses back on. And he called unto him and the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, but he shod with sandals and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into and a house, there abide till you depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart then, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Do you know that that's what our job is? We need to tell people about God. You know, when I go to Boscoff's and get a really good buy on a dress, I always tell somebody, I used to call Darlene and say, wow, their dresses are on sale. Or if, I, if I'm out hunting and, and I shoot a buck and I'm so excited about it, I might call Darlene and tell her. And then she can tell Rick because I know she's not real excited about it. <laughs> but you know what? I'm excited about things. I want to be excited about God. I want to be excited Claire, about how God has touched me and how he has got me different times to a gas station when I needed gas. And about how he sent us a check through the mail. How he touched our bodies and healed us. How he sent somebody to my door just when I needed somebody. 
How I received an encouraging text just at the right moment. How I got a telephone call from somebody that I haven't talked to for years. How he just does these things for us. And why? Because he loves us. And he wants us to trust in him. You know, you may, you may look around you and you may say, well, boy, this family hasn't been here for a while or these people haven't been there for a while. You know what? When you think of their name, pray for them. Right. Don't say, well, they know better. They should be in church. You know, it's kind of like when, when your kids do something and you say, well, you, sh you, you knew you shouldn't have done that. I've told you about that. You, know, you shouldn't be riding no hoverboard. You're 50 some years old. Why are you doing that? You know what? Encourage them not to ride a hoverboard at 59. I don't mean that. But encourage them. Say, you know what? God forgives you. God loves you. He understands. We don't understand, but God does. And we don't have to. God does. We, he does it for us. And, and God loves us. And you know, when they sent the disciples out, they went out and they witnessed for him and they healed people and they did all these wonderful things. And at the end of the day, when they come back, sure, they were tired. They needed a nap. But, you know, they were so excited to be able to tell God what their day was like. They were so excited to be able to share what their day was like. The enemy wants you to come home, be tired, and just take a nap and Forget about what happened. He doesn't want you to share, you know, so-and-so was healed. I went to so-and-so's house today, and they accepted the Lord as their Savior. Saint don't want to hear that. He wants you to be so tired. Um, I just heard a story not long ago of uh, a man who was a minister, and he was at a place, and they needed somebody to step in and, you know, preach a little sermon. And he said, no, I'm on vacation. Oh my, I'm so glad he didn't say that to me. You don't take a vacation from God. You don't take ever take a vacation from God. You know what? God will give you rest. He will renew your strength. He will help you through another sermon. And he will still give you that vacation. And I, I felt so bad when I heard that, but... God does supply for us. He has given us the Holy Spirit so each and every one of us can hear that calling he has on your life. You may say, but I don't have a calling. Well, you never know. Maybe you're trying to not think about anything because you're afraid you hear that voice. Um, there was a woman one time. Well, let me read this. Only God himself can give the power and to give you the equipment you need. If you go in your own power, you won't succeed. But there was a woman one time, and it's been years and years ago, she sang a song in church, and she was a beautiful singer. And she sang a song in church, and she sang it beautifully. And the minister in charge looked at her, and he said, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. But you know what? Now I want you to sing it in the Spirit. And I thought, wow, that was strong. But you know what? When she sang it in the Spirit, things happen. When you do things in the Spirit of the Lord, things will happen. When you go to that neighbor that does not neighbor well, things will happen if you go in the name of the Lord. If you take the Lord with you every step of your way, Things will happen. They may not happen in the time that we think they should happen. They may not happen. You may have to go to somebody two, three, four, five times. But you know what? Don't ever give up. God didn't give up, and I'm so thankful he didn't. I'm so thankful that God never gave up on me and that he still loves me, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Res resist that temptation to go yourself. And, and I, I have to relate some of this stuff to me. I'm not trying to blow my nose for anything, but I, I'm like that. It's like, well, let me just tell you. I'll go tell them. Just give me the phone. I'll talk to them. You know, and it's like, well, they said they weren't in church because they 
had a cold. Oh, yeah, they couldn't go to church, but they could have went somewhere else last night. They couldn't go to church because they were so tired. Well, yeah, they were too tired, but watch tomorrow morning. They'll be up and they'll be out valley again. You know, that's not our job. Don't go in yourself. Don't ever go in yourself. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord hold your hand and go with you. You know, I'm really, so, I, I'm really sad that you missed church. Well, I had this and I had that. Okay, but you know what? I'm just really sad that you weren't there. I think you would have enjoyed the singing, and, and I know that God would have blessed you if you were there. If, if you can just be that humble, that meek, what's that person going to say? I wouldn't want to be them. I'd be fishing around for something to say to cover up what I just, excuse I just gave. There are no excuses. God knows them all. He knows, he knows where you were. He knows what you were doing. He knows why you weren't at church. There are no secrets with the Lord. I've told you that the last how many sermons. There are no secrets with God. Whatever your situation, when, when the disciples went out and they prayed for people, they gave it their all because they wanted to do it for Christ. They wanted to share their treasures. The Lord, when they come back and they were tired, he said, come, come away with me. What's the Bible say? Come and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and he will give you the rest you need. You still need your soul replenished and he will replenish your soul. And I love this song and I love this scripture, Psalms 42 and 1. It reads, as the de deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. The whole idea is when God, we are disciples of Christ. And we go out and we do what God has asked us to do, no matter how long it took us, no matter what it took us, as long as we were doing it for God and the way God wanted us to do it, he will give us rest. He will give us peace. He will give you a, a feeling in your heart knowing that I did the will of the Father. That's what I want to do. I want to live in God's will. And it's about the disciple, not the multitude being fed. That was, that was easy for God to feed that multitude. But you know what? He also taught those disciples why he was doing it. So he did it also to teach them God is able. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more you could ever ask. Watch God. Watch what he will do for you. Don't watch what he's doing for somebody else and say, well, I wonder why you don't do that for me. Well, talk to God. Have that little talk with Jesus. Um, watch God, what he can do in the multiplication of your life. Disciples, they were followers. Do you want to be a disciple? Are you a disciple? Then we need to follow every step of the way. You know where it says about where the you only seen one set of footprints? Um, thank God it's because he's carrying me. He's carrying me every day, every day. And yeah, I get a little antsy and I get a little impatient and things like that, but you know what? He just reaches down and picks me up and he carries me through it. And I, I thank God for that. See, when Moses, he went out, the Red Sea was there. Was he looking around? Like, really, God? How am I going to part this sea? You've got a staff right there. Take it. Use it. And the sea just separated. And do you think David walked out and said, Well, God. Do you have like a 300 magnum? Because I think that's what it's going to take to get this giant down. Or do you have a boulder? Because if I roll it off the top of the hill, that stone. No. He sent him over to the brook and he got five smooth stones. And he took them and he whipped it and he got the giant. It doesn't take much to do what God wants us to do as long as you ask God, equip me. E whoops, I forgot I have that speaker in my <laughs> um, Equip me for what I need to be doing. Lord, I need equipped. And you know what? Sometimes I misplace my equipment and 
I have to go back to him and say, Lord, please equip me again. Help me. I'm getting weak and I need your strength. You know, everything changes when we turn it all over to God. The circumstances change. What is in front of us changes. And I thank God that he makes the changes in my life that I need. I want to use every treasure that the Lord gives me. And those hidden treasures help me to pull those out and use them for you, dear Lord. Help me, dear God, to be a blessing. Not because I want glory and honor and praise for myself, but I want you to receive it all. Give it all to Jesus, and he'll turn your sorrows into joy. Stand by him, take his hand, reach out like Peter did out of the water, especially on those days you feel like you're drowning. Just picture that. Peter reached his hand out, and Christ reached his hand down, and he took him, and he pulled him out. God will pull you out of that miry clay. He will pull you up and help you to stand firm on the solid rock of Christ if you turn it all over to him and give him all your treasures and do the will of the Father. I praise God for his word. I thank God. I hope that you received today something that is going to feed your heart and something that you can just think about. And if you are thinking that maybe that treasure is to teach a Bible study, to sing a song, to do whatever, as long as you're doing it for the Lord, it's, it's just such a blessing. The blessings are overflowing, and we feel in our home that our blessings have been just flowing and flowing and flowing. And because he's using you also to fill our, fill our tank with blessings. God bless you. Bible study tonight at 6 o'clock, if we all will stand. Sister Bonnie, yes. Can I, can I make a little announcement? You sure can.